People hate interviewing. I have a YouTube channel and it's all about interviewing and interview techniques and I have over 500 free videos. And one of the most common comments that I get is people talking about how much they hate interviewing, they hate the process, they do not like interviewing. And I get it. It's hard, it's complicated, it's convoluted, communication is unclear. And at the end of the day, it doesn't tell you a lot about how good you'll actually be at the job because the reality is interviewing is a skill, doing the job is a skill. They are not the same. But I've been in recruitment for almost 15 years. And the big secret is it is not that hard to be better than 95% of candidates out there when it comes to interviewing. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to do exactly that, but make sure you watch to the very end because if you don't watch to the very end and look at every single one of these tips, it might be the reason why someone else is that top 5% who beats you out. All right, let's get started. Now, first things first, I'm going to give you specific tips and things you can do that are not that time consuming that if you do them, you will be better than most candidates because the reality is most people do not do those things. Most people, they do a little bit of prep, they show up the interview, they expect it to go great, and guess what? It doesn't always go great. But if you do the right things, most of the time, it'll go really well. Now the first thing you need to do is you need to come in with a good baseline knowledge of what the company actually does. I can't tell you how many candidates I've talked to over the years who interview for a role and don't know what the company does. They don't know the company's products. They don't know the company's service. I used to ask the question as a corporate recruiter, what can you tell uh, me about this company? And people would straight up blank. They wouldn't know. And this happens for a lot of reasons. People don't do the appropriate research and people apply to a bunch of jobs. And if you apply to a bunch of jobs and you just take all the interviews that come in, you don't prepare for those specific ones. But there is no purpose in doing an interview if you're not prepared because you're not gonna get the job. You can take as many of them as you want, but if you don't actually prepare, you're not gonna win. So what I tell my candidates that I'm prepping um, is I want you to do research on the company. You need to know how long they've been around, a little bit about their story, what their products and services are, read about their company culture, values, spend 30 minutes familiarizing yourself with the company on their website. Then Google, the company name and look at news articles, right? What are the recent articles? What's going on with them? And then go to their YouTube page and if they have videos about what they do, watch them. Spend the time doing this. Look, you're gonna spend a lot of time interviewing for a bunch of different jobs, but if you don't nail the interview, it's all a waste. So put in the time beforehand to learn what the company does so you can come from a place of knowledge. Now the next thing you need to do is you need to take the, the job description and I want you to copy and paste it into a Word document or OneNote on your desktop for your computer. The reason why I want you to do this is because sometimes people apply to a job, then they take the job down, and then you can't access that information anymore. You can't see what the job description actually says. Because the next thing I want you to do is I want you to familiarize yourself with where you are a good fit and where you are not a good fit for the job. And you need to do both of those things because one, when you're talking about why you're a good fit, you need to be able to speak to that. When you're talking to the recruiter, HR person, or hiring manager, you need to be able to share where you are in strong alignment with the job responsibilities, how you have made an impact in your previous roles doing these things and you are qualified for the role and the spots where you are not qualified. If there's a misalignment, they want five years experience in C++ and you only have two years of experience in C++, right? You need to be able to speak as to why the misalignments aren't really a concern. You need to be able to address those if it comes up. So you can tell them that although you have less than the experience they were hoping for, you're competent in it and blah, 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 right? You need to be able to speak to wherever the dis uh, misalignment is um, and your ability to still function in the role at a very high level. Um, if you are not familiar with the role and you can't speak to why you are a great fit and you can't defend where maybe you fall a bit short, you're going to put yourself in a really hard position when it comes to discussing the actual day-to-day -day responsibilities of the role. Hey, are you finding value in this video? If you are, do me a favor, hit that like button. It's free, it tells YouTube I don't suck, and it motivates me to make more videos like this. It helps the channel a lot. And if you're already willing to do that, then do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. That way you never miss one of my three free weekly videos all designed to help you nail your next interview and land your dream job. The next thing you need to do is you need to bring passion to the interview and friendliness. Now those are two separate things, but they have a lot to do with your energy, right? The vibes you're giving off. So first, you need to be friendly in your interview. Smile, look people in the eye, shake their hand, be positive, right? Nobody wants to hire someone if they think they're gonna come in and be a massive drag, right? That little relationship, good to be around vibe thing, you're not gonna find it in a job description. 
but it matters. Nobody wants to hire the person who they think is gonna come in and drag the office down. And then passion. You have to have passion for what you do and enthusiasm. You should be able to talk about the job, the industry, the role you're in with some passion and enthusiasm. There is not a single hiring manager who exists who doesn't wanna hire a candidate who has passion for the job. One of the things I hear online a lot is, hey Ben, can we normalize working just for the salary? Yeah, sure. Not in the interview though, like in the rest of your life. Yeah, say, hey, I just work for money. You know, I work nine to five and it's quitting time and I go home and hang out with my family. Yes, sure, absolutely. But not in the interview. In the interview, you need to show passion for what you do. Because if you don't do that, you're gonna get beat out by somebody who is equally qualified, but does show passion. So show that passion in the interview. It is a small period of time you can still you know, normalize and feel like, hey, I just work my job for the money, but in the interview, you need to have passion for what you do. Now, if you wanna become the ultimate candidate and you wanna have me like personally prep you, what I want you to do is go down in the description box. That first link, that is the link to my full interview guide. Now, this is a complete guide that's going to teach you everything you need to know to absolutely nail your next interview. It's got a few things in there. It's got instructional videos. It's got templates for messaging. It's got activities that are going to help you hone your interviewing skills. It's essentially me helping you prep. So go down there, click it, check it out. The next thing you need to do is you need to practice hero stories and quantify your impact. Now, these are things I talk about quite a bit, but they're really important. Hero stories are things you have done in your career that you're just hoping you get a chance to share in an interview. They're your biggest career accomplishment, right? They're times you went above and beyond and solved a big problem. They're big projects that were a massive success, right? What I want you to do is I want you to open up a Word document or OneNote um, or Excel, if you're fancy. Um, and what I want you to do is write out those accomplishments. And I want you to actually write enough detail so you're familiarized with it in case you need to speak on it in an interview, right? What was the project you did? How long did it, you know, did it take? What was the, the budget for this? Who was involved? What was the end result? What did you learn along the way, right? You wanna write down all the information so you're actually prepared to speak about this. And quantifying your impact, that's looking at these projects and then being able to assign a dollar value to it, right? I was able to implement a cost-saving measure that over a 12-month period saved my company 25%, which ended up being 500K by doing blank, right? What that allows uh, the hiring manager to do is imagine what you might be able to do for their organization. So what you need to do is truly think about all the great things you've done, chronicle them, fully detail them, talk about the way you're able to save cost savings because the reality is you will be able to use these examples in your interview for a variety of questions. And if you're not familiar with the biggest, best, most impressive things you've done, well, you're never gonna be able to articulate that in an interview to impress the interviewer. The next thing you need to do is have great questions to ask them at the end of your interview. I've got a ton of videos on this. You can go watch my video, 27 Great Questions to Ask at the End of Your Interview. It's one of my more popular videos, go watch that. Um, but this is one of those things where a lot of candidates, they don't have any questions. You get to the end, you're like, do you have any questions for me? And they're like, no, <laughs> okay. So you just went and you prepared, you did this hour long interview and now you have nothing to ask. Um, it's not good, right? Or they'll ask one question or two questions or a bad question. It is a simple thing. But if you take 10 minutes, I think my video is 20 minutes, you take 20 minutes and watch that video, write down the questions you like the most, and then ask five to seven of them at the end of your interview, you will impress the interviewer and you will extract a ton of good information. Look, at the end of the day, this may not make or break your candidacy, but it'll definitely give you the edge over candidates who don't ask good questions, and it is too easy to not do it. Now, the next thing you need to do is you need to win the first three minutes and the last three minutes of your interview. It has been proven that these uh, six minute period, they disproportionately impact the outcome here. And I actually made a full video on it here. So I want you to go watch that because this breaks down exactly what you need to do to win the first three minutes and the last three minutes. So I'm done here, but I'll see you over there.